Hello everybody and welcome to a more modern episode in our book review series. This is your host Nino and I'm presenting you Land of Lisp, one of the most classical books to learn common Lisp. And one which chooses a truly unique approach. It, it is full of comics and so forth, but is at the same time one of the finest Lisp books which I believe have ever been written and personally I am particularly connected to this work as it was the one which truly let Lisp click for me. You know like when it clicks it's, it's not the same thing as getting the academic things down it is getting a feeling for it. Now let's see whether this review will proceed without all too many accidents because my book stand has been borrowed uh, and now I am up here with all sorts of makeshift creations involving my tablet and you know at some point even a floppy disk anyway <laughs> let, let's let's try it so land of lisp despite its somewhat let's say eccentric exposition it is written with a very good feeling for the needs of the newcomer and I'll make that a little larger actually so you can have a better feeling for how the book is written so here you can see a chapter on defining local functions in Lisp and prior to that Barsky had just also shown how to do the definition through let and these are, you know, concise and simple definitions. And what he is always doing in such cases, and which I find a great idea and highly welcome, is that he is actually also describing everything here in, in like little numberings, which he then goes through one by one. So you do get to see what is let and what is f let, but not in a terrible way, not in a not in a frightening way as to uh, what has what scope and uh, how it is formally described and what not, but in a more natural way, as in that's just how it looks. And he actually has a very, very unique way <laughs> of showing you how lists are interpreted, you know. And if you look at it, like, with all the jocosity to it, this is actually the perfect explanation. Yes, the first thing is taken as a some sort of command, and the rest is the blah 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 which it is applied upon. That, that's exactly how this works. And then he gives you an example of raising a number to an exponent. And this is how this book is generally looking. Like, if you can if you can look beyond the eccentricity and the humor, which I actually greatly enjoy, but if you do not let that influence your decisions all too much, then you will discover that this is actually an excellent Lisp book, which is doing great in order to get you closer to the material without very much effort. Now, what I else want, I wanted to show you over here, I believe. Yes, of course, the unavoidable little game of cons cells and how they are connected into forming lists is shown here too, but without all too many exercises. Like in reality, this is shown quite concisely and we shall be seeing something like that just a little bit later when he is showing also circular lists, but he does not delve too much into the boxes game. Uh, what he does show very nicely though is the difference between, you know, uh, cons pairs and creating lists and how nil can also be done uh, by, you know, two brackets and and how, though actually this quote should be, have been here with the two brackets, anyway, and, and how you can like cons things onto a list. In his examples, he's by the way mostly using C Lisp, a dialect of Lisp which is perhaps not anymore being as developed as it used to. 
Nonetheless, though, I have found no issue in, generally speaking, using the examples anywhere else too. And what I really like here is how he's showing the list function. That was one of those things which for me, as a total newcomer, over a dozen years ago, was a very helpful outline, you know, to understand that these really will form all the same results. Now, yeah, then he starts with the conditionals. So you do get into, into let's say, the particularities of Lisp quite quickly. And you see, he uses so extremely simple examples, which despite the fact that you would say the, these are informal and these are simplistic, are actually getting across the core of the matter perfectly fine. Yes, this is how Lisp is working. This is how if is working in Lisp. He does not start with cond. He does, of course, treat it later on. He starts with if, because that is presumably what people are rather acquainted with in other programming languages. So, as you can see, not much formalities, but very quickly showing results. And here, for instance, this advice, I really enjoyed how to use, like when to use ek and when to use equal. Like, ek for symbols and equal for everything else. And that has been always my viewpoint. In a way, I saw it always as a sort of misdesign of common Lisp to have a bazillion of comparison operators, although it normally is aiming for uniform treatment of its forms and expressions. Like, like to have a thing for maths, a thing for strings, a thing for symbols, a thing for somehow integers but not floats and whatnot, like that's cuckoo. And, and to just say, you know what, you can have, you can reduce everything just to ek for symbols and equal for everything else. That I think was advice, which to me as a newcomer was precious and, and simplifying and very helpful. Now, he also does quickly get into more fancy stuff. As you can see here on the upper half of the page, See, he does show you here such a def parameter things and whatnot, but I'd rather look at this. He, he does quickly get into applying append and map carrying things and so on. So he, he is not keeping this simple throughout the book. It is like you are being properly challenged. You do learn enough things. They just happen to be presented in a rather natural way. For instance, down here, He's showing you how to do this apply append story. And I mean, this is this is pretty clear, you know? Mary had a little lamp, you, you get the idea. Like you, you rather quickly get comfortable with this. Although you're doing actually a functional application on what is it? Page 76, like actually quite early in the book, you, you are not presented with it in some very great formal mathematician uh, way, but in a, in a way which you can, as a developer, quite immediately get used to and indeed use yourself. Now, oh, let's get over here. Yeah, you know, he loves games and he does show you the book throughout with all sorts of game examples. And you know, this this thing here, like with the look and you are in the living room and the wizard is snoring loudly in the couch. I mean, just that you're not in a clearing with some mailbox or something like that, you know, like, so you, you do get very quickly into some sort of a Zork-like um, project. And he then, you know, he then does actually take you through everything as to how this is then to be programmed, how this is then to be done. And again, quite, quite natural. What then follows is a really funny entry into printing and reading. And, and I love that as opposed to many other list books, he's just starting with old fashioned regular print. Not with this format mambo jumbo, which uh, some others are forcing upon their reader, which is a language of its own in a way. 
and and you know you haven't started with Lisp, but you already should learn format. This is nonsense. Rather, he gives you here a very natural example of how to you know read the name and print a name, and that is that is what 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 a a reader wants to see, like what what a novice wants to understand. That you know things things can be actually quite simple in the beginning. Like why why start with the complex part? But he does not keep things, you know, too simple. He does show you the power of combining read, print, uh, and eval into creating a, a REPL, you know. So, so here you already are seeing how you can combine what you have just learned together with uh, Lisp's homoeconicity in order to get a Lisp interpreter, sort of, like an inter in interface for interaction. Now, he does also show you, though, why one should not be too blue-eyed with such things. And this is why, perhaps, you know, interpreting data as code is something you should be wary of. And even if a language offers it like Lisp, not to jump around its neck, lest you end up in a place you don't want to be. And then he actually has an own cham uh, chapter on Lambda. And he does tell you actually quite straight why this is, like, what is this great advantage with Lisp is having. Like, the ability to pass around functions as if they were just plain old pieces of data is incredibly valuable. and And that indeed is you know, this one great distinguishing part of Lisp, and I would say more even than homoeconicity in a way. Of course, homoeconicity flows into it, but the idea is that you can actually compute not only through functions, but also on functions, which is very nice. Now, again, we do happen to get, though, into circular lists and therefore little boxes. He shows you how this can be changed into this. And he does give you also, I would say, a fair warning how to print circular lists in whatever Lisp environment you are. He then also goes in to explain you association lists or A lists. Though the fun part is, I haven't actually noticed this book anywhere mention P lists. It's like he doesn't care about it. But he actually does disadvise in the end against using them because he says in the end they are just pairs of data in a list and therefore access times could really be better, you know. And then I just just had to show you this. This is what is throughout this book. Like I didn't want to spend too much time on showing you these elements but they are awesome and they are everywhere <laughs> and this one somehow despite all the years that have passed has burnt itself into my mind so yes he does show you one in one of the projects the grand theft wumpus game and jokey as things are and fun as it is you do get however to learn how to work with arrays and that you can actually do complicated things with arrays uh, here he just mentions the make hash table thing uh, but, but later on he actually gets to use it a little bit more you know a little bit more in serious he, he gives you suitable simplistic perhaps examples with one dimensional arrays at first but still you do get to have an idea and what he also nicely mentions here and I think in a proper place is that set is a generic setter that you can put a thing in a place through, uh, through set just as by figuring out how to pull it out of somewhere and how this is actually quite a powerful feature and it is and I'm actually quite quite amazed by it and yeah then then here you actually get to learn how to do the hash table thingy you know and how to like that like make hash table and then um getting hashes and setting hashes and and so on so 
he treats he treats these two together, which I find actually quite reasonable because hash tables from the user's perspective are quite related to arrays in my point of view. He also mentions the possibility of returning multiple values, something which, while I understand is possible, I have always found thoroughly useless. And while I know that it's being made use of, in particular by the official functions and this and that, I've always been thinking, if the other values are so important, then, you know, just return a list and your base value can be just the car of the list and everything else can be just following afterwards. Now, he does also something else which is quite nice. He explains how to define and uh, use structures, you know, like here, for instance, up there, you see the good Bob. Oh, gosh, age 35. I was way younger when reading that book. Now oh, I'm much older and gosh, if I could just find my walking stick. <laughs> what I do like though is that he doesn't just, you know, throw them into your face like these are structures and like these are structs, like live with it. He also tells you, um, has a little discussion here on why one should work with them. For instance, he does mention that one can, of course, define everything just simply as a as a list and not bother with it. But he does mention that, you know, when you're having a clean structure, it's much clearer what should go where. That, that You know, that Bob is a person, that age is, is a thing and so on. That you do not define complete nonsense, but that perhaps things are a little bit more orderly. So he, he gives arguments. I like that. Though I still don't like structures. <laughs> and then comes the most unique differentiator of this book compared to any other list book I have ever seen. Namely something which he calls the periodic table of the loop macro. And where he shows you all sorts of loopings from a simple loop up there throughout all sorts of things using while and return from and finally and god knows what and and with when and with and conk and with whatever like this is quite remarkable i'm not sure you cannot likely read much here but let me try to increase here a little bit the size so you can see he tries to give examples for each one of those loops and how to, to use them. And for me, this is an amazing overview, which at first I was sort of, you know, finding amusing and later on finding terribly useful <laughs> because this is, this is stuff you just don't tend to remember all that much, but, but that way it's presented really, really nicely. Now, yeah, now finally, in this chapter, we are getting slowly into format. Now he has finally a chapter where he does teach you about format. And what I do like is that he does not present format just like, like God's punishment on to all those lispers who want to to print something, but he actually gives viable uh, viable examples. Where was it? I mean, let me just see where where he put this. Yeah, great. Now I lost it. All right. Give me a second. I want to find it. Yeah, right. So here you can see why format would matter and in what form that would be sensible to have like that that it does show um, things in a nicely tabulated fashion so i believe the introduction to format is actually quite good and quite matching reality and expectations of the users and what he then also shows you is of course further things you know as you're handling printing, you might as well handling printing to other things, such as to files. And here he shows you, well, basically how you can um, print 
data into a file and how you can later on how you can read data from a file like you know print and read and you know if you package your data into a list you know this is not c this is not assembler you do not have to to handle the logic of the data really much in the output you can just package everything into some data structure of your choice and then simply dump it out somewhere and then later just read it in as one blob so so that actually already you know is 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 everything you need to know in order to start to use these things in lisp but he actually continues this into interesting further directions namely showing you socket connections this is not as innocent as it looks because he does later on actually do web programming with lisp and he gets a lot into this sort of this sort of affair so here you're also having how to be connecting to a server and how a client can be chatting with a server this is not entirely an abstract and random discussion as one of his next tasks is, is indeed to create a web server and that's also not where things stop like it, it really does continue but more on that later first of all he is making a little bit of an advertisement on higher order programming and on functional programming and I mean he gives you list uh, he gives you items and arguments why it is actually good and why it is um helping in particular to reduce bugs and, and have a more compact uniform and more elegant program all over so so that's just a little more on the philosophical side but it is actually nice and as a novice this certainly also did that impressed me because I did not understand what it is all about and why should I care. Now, as he is programming games and, and guiding you through, through these things, you do get introduced into, you know, one of the most classical topics of artificial intelligence, namely search and game trees and, 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 and this sort of thing. And what is really interesting is, you know, this is a half page explanation of Minimax you know and and i really do like it and what he also does mention and many others don't mention is that it only works for games of two players one against the other whereas if you get a third player there might be complications because it's not always clear that so to say my advantage is his disadvantage like whose maybe the one will lose more than the other so that that that's really nice and, and he also gets into topics which are normally treated as quite advanced, but um, are of course very very useful for in, in, in actual programming, namely m memoization. Memoization is basically the process of remembering what something was in the past, and instead of computing it anew, simply dumping that previous value. It's like caching, okay? And he does describe you how memoization would be working and uh, for whole game trees. So, so he actually does make that a topic later on. You know, me memoizing the game tree. So, so that's remarkable, <laughs> in particular for an introductory book. And also he does mention tail call optimization. Now, you know, we, we're quite far in the list book by now. So this is not coming on very early, but it is not a book on Scheme. It's a book on Lisp, and therefore I find it actually really nice that he does treat that topic, in particular given that it is a thing, in particular in modern Lisp systems, right? Well, that follows this, perhaps my only sort of point of criticism in the book, namely the chapter on macros, which is really, 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 really brief and really, really, really superficial. Although he later on does use macros quite a lot. And, and therefore, 
that's perhaps that was perhaps too fast. You know, he should have dwelled a little bit more on them before plunging into them all that much. And then comes, you know, his treatment of domain-specific languages. Uh, what would it be? What do you think would it be? It's not, it's not the classical movement of um, blocks on one of the other, but it is an interesting sort of modern variant on it. Namely, it's a dice game. And the question is about creating SVG graphics and showing how how dices can be uh, made to like defined to look and to be produced in a web page. Guess why? Because we will be using a web-based game in the end. <laughs> and, and he is showing you like how how such definitions can be produced. You can see this here on this tag of the color blue and the size big of the of the die and so on. So he does that actually a lot. And uh, he, he also gets more uh, into this game search and game tree topic here, in particularly showing you alphabeta pruning. And basically that you, that you can cut off entire branches of the game's computation once a maximum or a minimum value has been reached because you're saying that from then on trying to figure out things in depth just simply makes no further sense. So that's again quite an intuitive introduction which he goes a bit into and that like at some point you simply say that the move is as good as possible you know. So that's actually quite natural and fits into his little game idea and it looks more innocent than it is because you know this this is pretty much still how you can do a lot of interesting computations and then you see already where things are going right like how he's calling up here some some form and and defining a die and then you're getting all of those uh data for drawing it and then that's what the die is looking at, at like in the end and things are getting a lot more complex because that's what the real final like screenshot of the game looks like. So, everybody, as you can see, the book is not harmless. It may be jokey, it can show you such really lovely drawings, which I did enjoy. I admit I did enjoy them. But in the end, it is a very thorough introduction which I can clearly recommend and also recommend over some others very much hyped modern list books but this one is truly a modern classic on Lisp and one of my absolutely favorite books now that's it that's the end of this review thank you very much for watching Hope to see you here soon again. Have a wonderful time until then. And from me, goodbye.